Hello and welcome to the SheClicks webinar about colour grading. I'm Angela Nicholson and I'm the founder of SheClicks. Okay, before we get going, I have a word from our sponsor. This webinar is sponsored by Lens Baby, the manufacturer of hand-built creative lenses that enable special effects such as velvet suite, edge and swirl in camera, freeing you to deliver your vision and connect with your photography in a deeper and more meaningful way. So thank you very much to Lens Baby. Okay, now it's time to hear from our speaker, Jane Lazenby, who is a, no stranger to SheClicks webinars, and she's making a welcome return by popular request. Hi, Jane, how are you? Hi, Angela. I'm fine, thank you. And thank you so much for the invite to come back and visit the SheClicks ladies. Thank you. Well, thank you for accepting. It was uh, there, there was definitely a popular request, so thank you for coming back. Now, I know you've got lots to say today, so do you want to crack on straight away with your presentation? I will. I will uh, get sharing my screen through. Now, I'm always asked about how I use colour. Um, I love to get colours that mean things and add narrative in an image. So this presentation is going to be all about the many different ways that I work with colour. So I predominantly do fine art images. And when I say fine art, I tell stories. I like to use human and animal partnerships to tell stories. But I like to evoke emotions with colour. I almost want to take you on a journey with the images. So sometimes my use of colour is more important in camera and sometimes the use of colour I enhance afterwards with post-processing techniques. I think the deal with colour, we attach emotions to it. It's almost like taking us on a journey. I often say that you have the image and then you can add the poetry to it by additionally working with colour to sort of give you more depth. So all of us have different associations with colour. There are the really obvious one, red means love, red means anger, but different cultures, different groups of people have different interpretations of colour. And I'm wanting, in a way, to walk you through. I mean, warm colours, yes, they're happier, smoother. The cool colours maybe are more introspective. So I'm going to show you really how I use all of these different colour changes. And I'm going to work through, as a live edit, some of the actual techniques that I use to create these. So a little bit about colour psychology. Don't worry, I am not sending you all back into school to sit there and have people telling you too much information. I think it's really quite interesting how we all view colour. I mentioned red briefly. I love adding these bright, vibrant, warm tones to images that need energy. You can really inject more fire, literally, into a piece. Now this image here has red added as a texture which I'll cover later but you might find it interesting just to glance through the different interpretations of what the colour red can mean. I mean it, it is vast, it really is. We move to pink, I mean some of them yes, obvious, innocence, baby pink. But then you start to read into it more. Here in this image, I've specifically changed the dress colour to be more pink. I've enhanced the flowers in the garden to be more pink, to show the young girl and puppy and to sort of play on that innocence. Yellow, well, not a lot of us use yellow. But yellow I find to be a very, very interesting colour. It can really lift in an image. And I think here we've got that little bit of, of sort of uncertainty with the pose, but that yellow with the element on the dog and within the dress both join. I've colour graded this yellow to subdue it, to slightly desaturate it, which made it have a much more thoughtful feel within the image. 
orange, the vibrancy and energy of orange. This is a straight out of camera image. I really worked with shooting into the sun to try and get that flare, to try and get bleached out areas. And I'm hoping you're seeing how these different colors really bring a different element of story to each of these images. Blue, she almost looks like some Madonna-esque figure. It's given a religious undertone, hasn't it? This sort of beautiful color combination between the hair and that rich blue. Now, blue is a color I absolutely adore mixing into my images and enhancing here I've played with the saturation both of the hair colour and of that blue wrap to really get that rich intensity. Purples, violets, they're not that easy to create unless you can get quite a few of them through in camera but here I'm shooting against the light. I've done a little colour grade and I've dropped the intensity of a lot of that sort of rich colour within the image to give a very soft, almost like a voyage of discovery feel to this child walking through the field. I really love playing when I'm creating the images, trying different colours, maybe then deciding on increasing one side of the story by adding a certain colour. Brown, well, being a horse photographer, a lot of horses are brown, but I really like the interpretation here. Um, sort of reliability, comfort, stability, all of those I sort of pitch onto horses. I must admit, horses are my spirit creature. But I love creating these soft tones, almost like beautiful Rembrandt tones. And it often brings a stillness and a a beautiful harmony and quietness to an image. Blacks, while I do like sombre, dark and shadowy, but I also like using black within garments, asking for more darker shadows, taking out colour to have those dark charcoal greys. Again, it sort of gives a lovely feel to the image. I mean, this image here, it's not evil, but I've got a little bit of elegance and I think a little bit of sadness within that one as well. For me, getting the story, allowing the story to sing is one of the biggest parts of how I process my images. Here, white horse, white dress, white crown, almost white hair, but I've added in a soft blue tint. I've added a texture to the background to change the overall colour balance to give it more interest. It's very easy to just target your highlights and to change the colour. I'll show you how to do that later. You can target just your shadows and warm those or cool those. There are so many different ways that you can just increase a tiny bit one direction or another and it often ends up looking very cinematic. Green, again, shoot with lots of horses. I'm forever in fields. But I find I'm forever desaturating green. I'm taking out that top edge of yellow. I'm softening it back, making it more peaceful. And it's interesting when you look here, good luck with green. Well, lucky green clover as well, isn't it? self-awareness, generosity, fertility, but then also jealousy and envy. There's a real mix of emotions. Again, if I find my image suits some of these emotions, I will increase my green. I'll add more green in. Finally, we've got silver and gold. Quite often as photographers, we don't shoot with metallics. It can give us such a strong bounce back of highlight. But I love adding, adding sorry, shimmering tones. And I think these silvers really suit this image. I've added a little bit of pink to it. I've added a little bit of blue also in the shadow that makes that silver multicolored. It stops being a monochrome 
silver, giving it much more depth. Gold here, extravagance, prosperity, opulence. It's everything, isn't it? Beautiful gold tones. But look at the skin. I've added a yellow to the highlights of the skin to increase that ping of the gold. So it's really good fun to play with the colours within the image. I think, first of all, I need to cover what is conscious colour. And what almost is the unconscious side? Conscience colour is where you're picking colours to put in front of the camera. I love styling. I absolutely love styling. This set here, gold and silver dress, um, a beautiful golden wrap that matched and brought out the skin tone and hair of the model. A silver throw on the horse that matched the silver dress. A white horse that was silvered, shot in natural light. I'm trying to connect all of my elements of colour together in camera, then enhance them further at the other side when I start to process. Now, not just working with your, your garments, it's also things like your props. What are you bringing in? How will it harmonise? What message will the colour of that bucket or that bag, what, what can you put in with the narrative? You can also add coloured gels. You can shoot with multiple coloured gels to bring the colour in in camera. That's quite an exciting thing to do as well. And I think environmental colour, what colour's the backdrop going to be? What colour is the environment that I want to shoot in? You can have quite a lot of control over that side as well. So these are the things we can control. But the other things I always feel that are the secrets is what do we put in afterwards? Here again, the, the choice has been made, strong reds with grey horses for a strong contrast. A little bit of power as well. But it's the not so obvious colour we are going to cover in depth today. Here, a white horse. Well, he's not white, is he? He's got light blue and a slight sort of cyan tint. So I've changed his highlights. I've changed his shadows. And now he's got much more of a, a sort of statuesque feel. It becomes more than just white. And this colour toning, this is the art, I think, of putting the poem to the image. It's adding more, isn't it? It's putting that emotion in. And this is, this is my little passion. This is what I absolutely adore to create. So I, if I could say it was my post-processing number one, I think I would as well. So how do you tell which way to go? Well, it's a lot of personal preference. These are two frames that were shot next to each other. One, the eyes are open on the uh, handler, one, the eyes are shut. With the eyes shut, I wanted it to be quieter, more thoughtful, possibly a little bit more on edge. So I took her towards the cooler tones. The model shot with her eyes open, she's looking ahead. I want it to bring more warmth. Which one do you prefer? I mean, it's down to the individual. There's no right or wrong. I suppose one thing is, is not to overpower. These are tiny touches, aren't they? These aren't taking the slider all the way to the left or right. These are tiny increments in colour changes. But it adds the story, doesn't it? This beautiful knight in armour on a, a cold, misty morning, that sort of lovely colour tone in the back, the way the hawthorn hedge has gone into purples, all telling that story and bringing the mood. This is the sort of colour change that I'm going to show you how to create. So how are we going to do it? I've got a number of different ways. There must be at least 20 ways to change colours. And obviously I can't, in barely an hour, I can't cover every single one known to man. 
but I'm going to talk about my main ones that I use within Photoshop. So the camera raw filter, it is immense. There are so many ways just within camera raw that you can refine the colors. Camera raw is the same engine as Lightroom. So you'll find if you're a Lightroom user that a lot of the things I do in camera raw really make sense to you and you can copy those through. You can follow those steps within Lightroom and create beautiful color grades. Things like just changing the white balance, even by a tiny degree, can start to change a story. I like to use selective color. I like to think, OK, that yellow dress, which way are we going to take it? So I'm actually looking at changing specific colors within an image. I'm going to go through a series of adjustment layers that are going to subtly give me some of these changes. The color saturation and the solid color layer are both adjustment layers as well. You can use multiple. You can, can stack them up in tiny little changes until you get the feel that you want. I can replace color. I can specifically touch on a color with an eyedropper and only change that. So you can be incredibly precise. You can even change a lot of things on one layer and then add a mask and pare it back down. Again, that will be something I can show you. Now, textures, I have been called, I must admit, it's not a label I've given myself. I have been called the queen of textures. I love adding textures to either muffle a background or add an art feel, but you can also colorize with using textures and create some wonderful effects. And lastly here, a lookup table, a LUT and a color action. Well, some of these exist in your Photoshop already. You can purchase these as well. And you, of course you can make your own. So it's something that you can come back to and color tone other images exactly the same as the way that you've saved. So you can recreate your recipe again and again. And I think what I've shown you already, there is for me not one way of doing color. There is not one result of an image that has been color graded. It has to be wide and full of variety so that it can encompass any genre and any style. So what we've got here, bleak gray day in southern France. I think, in fact, it was raining. But it's beautifully quiet. It's almost, I think, like it's almost like a meditation, this image quite a lot of changes, dulled down the yellow, brought up the cyan, brought up the blue, and it's very, very peaceful. And this is a favourite that I've created from my daughter from, I think she was seven at the time. And the colours in the background echo the colours in the garment. So there's a colour harmony. If you've not heard of people talking about colour harmony, it's that little echo of the same colours all the way around the image. And it brings a real sort of sense of calmness. Your eye can travel across the surface of the image really smoothly. It was a big change from the green in the background and the grey that my daughter was wearing was actually blue. So there were some big changes in that image before I felt I'd got a formula that worked. So a quick look in Camera Raw, we will be going into Camera Raw as our first edit. You have a whole row of things you can use. Your basic edits, well, you would do those anyway, but the colour profile. And the colour profile being artistic, suddenly you find there's all sorts in there you didn't know. I can quickly change the white balance, the colour temperature. I can go into the colour grading here and just work individually on the highlights or the midtones or the shadows. And the colour mixer means hue, saturation and luminance of all of your colours. So again, tiny increments and changes 
It's really accessible and quite simple to use. The color adjustment layers, well, when you start to make layers in Photoshop, that often seems a little step further up in more advanced use, doesn't it? Again, once you've made the color layer, the nice little sliders are relatively easy to use and you see the effect almost immediately. I always like using these because these are truly non-destructive and you have a mask on them so you can select where you want that colour effect to be. Replacing colour is where I specifically go in for one colour and then I can work out how I want to change the hue, the lightness or darkness or the saturation. So again I've suddenly got a load of control. Now don't worry about the mention of the fuzzy slider. That does sound very bizarre. I'll come into more detail with that one. Texture layers. I love textures. They can add so much story. They can colour tone. They can cut out so much backgrounds and really take you into a whole different scenario with the image. I love textures for atmospheric effects just as much as I love them for colour. Never underestimate the power of a texture. Lookup tables, another best kept secret. Now I do make my own lookup tables, but you will find Photoshop has a whole hidden list like you can see here. These are one click colors. So you can fade them by fading the opacity. You can put a blend mode on them to get them to react differently but they're not a complex thing. It's just a one layer color change. If you like your complex color changes, a color action is the bee's knees. You can open them up. You can create a bespoke fit to whatever image you're working on. Again, they're relatively simple to make yourself or you can purchase them. I've put here admissible in competition, as are the LUTs the lookup tables, but you have to be careful that there is no element of picture changing, just colour changing, because if there is elements of changing your picture, it could be that that would not be admissible in a competition. So where do we start? What's your story? What colours are you going to be drawn to? How do you want to change things? So I'm going to change images into more warm, friendly, more cool, thoughtful, and maybe sometimes just let that image have a free reign and almost let it tell me what it wants to do. So I'm going to go through into Photoshop. I'm going to close this presentation down and I've got some images ready and open to be color graded. Some of them, like the image you've got on screen, I might go a little bit wild and change my green leaves into orange. You never know. But some of them will be very calm and very subtle. So I'm just going to pop back into the room and pop back out and go through into Photoshop. So this is my first image, pretty much straight out of camera. I say that tongue in cheek. I've done a little bit of lightening of the girl's skin, of the rider's skin. So first of all, I'm going to take us into Camera Raw. That will be my first stop. If you're new into Photoshop or if you find Photoshop daunting, this is a really nice way to do some colour changes. I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to go into filter and I'm simply going to come down into that camera raw filter. Now, your image doesn't have to be a raw file. It really doesn't. And when I click here, we're going to just move into another window. Everything should look the same. Here we go. Nothing really is different. Hopefully, Lightroom users, you go, yeah. I'm okay with this. This is safe zone, isn't it? 
So the first thing I'm going to do is look at profile. If I click here and I go through to browse, I end up with a whole load, an absolute load of choices. Now, I have to give you a warning. If I am just going to edit at this stage, I am making destructive edits. I won't have a floating layer that I can fade. It will be that original image that has had those edits done. So I'm going to exit and copy my background, Command or Control J, and simply pop back up, back into Camera Raw. That means if I create an effect that I then think could be a little bit too strong, I can fade that top layer. If I feel I've made a mistake and I need that safety net when I'm editing, I can simply go back to that original file. But let's go back and investigate what quite is in here. Artistic? What on earth's this? So I'm going to click and open. Oh, my word. And suddenly, as I move my cursor, it applies so I get a preview. I've got all these hidden, oh, I like that one, all these sort of hidden different colorways. So these are like presets that are in Lightroom, but these are Camera Raw's own presets. So I have to think which one suits my taste. Can I fade them? Well, I can't fade how these apply to the image we have on screen, but I do have that image underneath the original so I can fade the layer that I'm applying this to. And in that way, it will give me a little bit more control. So my favorite here is most definitely the Artistic 3, but I need to open the others, the black and white. Did you know you've got a whole load of black and white options in Camera Raw. So I'm zooming through the black and white because really we're going to talk about colour. So I'm going to click onto modern. And again, we have different options. Some are lighter, some are darker. Some are a little bit tough on your highlights. Some are dulling down your greens. Preference, well, is completely personal. And of course, each one of these will act differently on your image, depending what colors are actually present in your image. I'll click down onto the vintage. Now I find when anything says vintage, it is less competition friendly and more artistic because vintage tends to ignore the rules of highlights and dark shadows, doesn't it? But again, you've suddenly got all of these presets all sat in Camera Raw when we didn't know they were there. So I'm going to go back to my favourite. I'm going to go back to this and simply click OK. Now I'm going to bring this image back in and show you some of the other ways. So this would be my artistic... Um, yeah artistic preset. I'm just going to turn that off and let's go and have a look at another way back up into Camera Raw. So the next thing that I want to do, I want to go into the basic and look at my white balance. Now I can click a shot, I can ask it to do an auto white balance, which could be a nice color change. Or I can actually manually move around my color temperature and create it warmer and maybe slightly more autumnal. I'm going to continue with this image. I'm going to come down to the color mixer and open this up. Let's say I want to take down my green. So I'll look for saturation to desaturate my green. When I'm going to desaturate green, I often start with the yellow first. Then I work on desaturating the green. And I get this beautiful 
neutral ghosting of all of the vegetation. It's still got a little bit of colour, but not too much. Now, what about the horse's colour? He could do maybe with a little bit of orange, brightening and saturating. Let's play with the luminance, which seems to be more about the lightness or darkness of a specific colour. Let's hit orange. That will also come in with our rider's skin. Can you see orange lighter, orange darker? So this is a great way to target specifics, isn't it? Let's brighten our green or take our green down. I think I prefer the green a little bit lighter. Let's see where does our yellow go? This is quite a big change. She's starting to pop out more of the background. If you've not already guessed, I'm going for a little bit Lord of the Rings, a little bit of more of an ethereal style with this. Let's look at the hue. Let me just see how we can work with bringing in and out the yellow. I prefer the yellow out. And I'm going to drop a little bit of the orange or lift the orange. Now, can you see what the orange is doing to our rider and horse? The horse is going very sort of deep, rusty red, but it's really impacting on the skin. So this is going to be a point where I'm going to work for the horse and I'm going to ignore the rider and I'm going to show you how to put a mask on at the end. So before we finish in colour and camera raw, I'm just going to go into colour grading. This is so much fun. What colour do I want to take my shadows? So I have this amazing slider. Look at this luscious world of colour. If I only want subtle, I keep my circle very near the centre. If I want a strong application, I come out onto the outer diameter. Again, I can move around. I can see what comes forwards, what comes back. If I just want to target the highlights, which would be the rim light, the dress, the edges of some of these leaves, let's target green. Can you see just the tiniest change? And if I take the highlight slide around, pinks, purples don't work too much, but it is very subtle, isn't it? The mid-tones tends to be a lot stronger and it's like putting gels on almost. So let me show you now how I can recover the colour in our rider's face. So I've finished my camera raw. I click OK at the bottom and my rider arrives back in. So if I look at this layer and I want to take out some of the colour on the face, I simply add a mask. The mask is the icon at the bottom that looks like it has a hole in it. I'm going to click there. And if I paint on the mask, it will paint out and go to the layer below. So if you have problems with masks and layers in Photoshop, think of it like a sandwich. If I want to take out where a head is so I can see a hole through to the image below, the mask will do that. So I have a white mask. I go get the brush tool. And what I can do with the brush tool is make a hole. She looks awfully grey now, doesn't she? <laughs> That's her original colouring. Make a hole in the mask to show our skin. You can see the hole I've made on the mask. Now, the reality of this, she probably looked better with a little bit of that heightened colour. So she doesn't look over pale coming through the woodland. So I'm simply going to change my black brush to a white and just add a tiny bit of that colour back in. Now, if I want to be really subtle, I can fade the whole of this layer and just take it down 90%. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm subduing those colour changes. 
Take it down a little bit more. Perfect. So that was Camera Raw. Camera Raw's got a few other things that it can do, but we're not exactly got a lot of time this evening. So I'm going to carry on moving on and we're going to say goodbye to that image. And we're going to look. This is our next image. I wanted to bring some yellow in. I do love yellow. But what we're going to look at now is using the colour adjustment layers. So the adjustment layers are down in the bottom right of your layers panel. And it's these two half circles. So first of all, let's open that up. And I'm going to do a solid colour layer. So this is going to be one great big solid 100% opaque uh, colour. But then we're going to refine it to match. So don't worry if everything goes black. I'm going to click on solid colour and everything is black. But you'll see it's brought me up a colour picker where I can move and gain different colours. I can also use this beautiful colour rainbow and work whatever way I want. Let's go into adding a golden light. Now again, this is way too strong. I'm going to click OK. But how we use this strong solid colour is to either drop the opacity, here she is, to nearly nothing. There we go. If I turn that off and on. It gives a very slight tickle of colour. Another way I can use this solid colour layer is by using a blend mode on it where it says normal above the layer and I click. I have 27 different transparency options. All of these are non-destructive. All of these are one click. And if I run down, I will get a live preview. Very subtle because that colour layer opacity has been reduced. Maybe there's one that you feel gives the softness. She's got such an innocent look as this girl. And the puppy looks guilty. It usually is guilty because it's mine. But you might find, in fact, that has given a, a lovely paleness, maybe too pale to the skin. You don't have to know where you're going. Actually, I like that one. Yeah, I like overlay. You don't have to know where you're going, but part of the deal of working with colour is that when you see a colour change that you like, you stop. You don't pile 20 on. You think, OK, I liked what that did. Right. I liked what that overlay did. Let me turn this off and on. Very subtle. That's what we want. We don't want to turn the dog day glow yellow. I'm going to go and make another adjustment layer. We're going to create a little stack of different ways of working. I'm going to go into curves. Now, quite often we use the curves layer to go darker or lighter. Well, I'm going to use the curves layer to change colour. I'm going to break into the RGB, which will drop down here, and I'm going to go to the blue curves. Now, if I move the bottom, I add blue into my shadow. If I drop the top, I add yellow into my highlights. We're going a little bit more cinematic. That has been quite a big change. Let me close it down, turn it off and on. Is that too much? I might just be a little bit more subtle. Drop down a tiny little bit more. So we're going to continue playing with these adjustment layers. What comes next? Well, hue and saturation. This is a Pandora's box. This is great. Don't just zoom up and down here and, you know, it's way, 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 way too strong. Go where it says master and look at tackling your colours individually. What can we do with our yellow? So I want to just desaturate the yellow. And that pretty much is leaving everything else, isn't it? Tiny little bit 
change on the face, but the desaturation gives a quieter feel. Do I want to darken my yellow or lighten my yellow? Now, this is great if you have your own prop cupboard and the same dress comes out again and again. You can make these changes and make that dress seem to be a little bit different. What about our reds? Reds of lips, red within the dog and the hair. Can you see? Only micro adjustments. Let's keep going. What about adding a little bit more blue? So this should change more blue in the background. Saturate. Way too much, but we can see where it's working. I dial it back down and possibly allow it to darken off. Again, you can change your backdrop. Maybe keep that a little bit lighter. So lots of really nice, subtle ways of working. I just want to nip into the green and add a little bit more bounce to the greens down by her knees. Maybe add a little bit more depth to those. So three adjustment layers, I'll be done. Nope, there's more. So let's have a look what else we've got here. I'm going to go into selective colour. This looks the same as what we've just done with hue and saturation, but this is more fun. Into yellow. This is where I add or take out warmth or coolness. So if you look at the yellow, it suddenly goes peachy and soft or it goes cool and nearly to a lemon, doesn't it? So how do I want to refine it? I think she looks better, a little peachier. Do I want to put in magenta into the image or take out magenta? Again, I want to micro adjust. What about the yellow? Do I want the yellow more uh, full on, richer? Or am I looking to cool that yellow to nearly white? I'm going to keep that yellow cool. And the black, this is almost sort of adding more richness or adding that little bit more desaturation. Now, as you could imagine, how many colours have we got? Well, we can be here half an hour, can't we? At least just using this colour change box. The best thing is always to play isn't it let me go into the white let's see if we can change our little dog pink cyan more yellow less yellow this is why i love to play with white horses because it just brings in that little tickle of color so i'm just going to check at the bottom there are other things like the gradient map that we can use. We are going to come back for the colour lookup, but we're going to use a different image for that. Colour balance is very much like using our white balance. And it's just slightly one way or the other. The lovely thing is we can look at midtone, shadow or highlights. Let's go into shadows and bring in a little bit more blue. Do I want to change the highlights? Well, let's change this way with highlights. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of yellow. So these adjustment layers, they look quite scary, don't they? A whole layer with lots of different sliders and it's got a mask and it's like, oh my word. But actually, just play and do tiny, tiny increments. So I think we are ready for a little bit of replacing colour. So where's my lovely horse image? Now, green is the bane of every horse photographer's life, isn't it? Those wildlife photographers, you're out, green is everywhere. Well, I'm using a different way, not an adjustment layer this time. So I'm going to make myself a copy layer and I'm going to call this replace colour. 
I'm going in a different direction now. I'm going up to the top. This is a destructive edit, which you probably guessed by me making a base layer copy. Image adjustments, replace color. Oh yes, what color dress do you want? Shall we take the green into Wonderland? Well, this gives you a chance to do a whole host of things. So let me explain the fuzzy brush, the fuzziness is how much do I want the color change to apply over the image? So the first thing I need to do, let's just go and click on the green. I've brought my cursor out. It's already got the eyedropper. So I click and it's selected the green. What do I want to do to the green? Well, I'm going to bring down the saturation. Now you'll see it's brought down the green saturation at the top, but not so much at the bottom. Where we have the black and white here is showing us where that same color is within the image. If I want to only change the exact color that I clicked on, which was this little bit of green up here, my fuzziness goes to the left. If I want to change all my green, I keep moving over to the right and all my green starts to change. That's a big difference. I can rescue a little bit with the saturation. I can change a little bit of lightness or darkness. Maybe that looks better light. If I really want to go wacky, I can change to autumn. I can probably change to Armageddon or burnt a complete purple fantasy. Please excuse me. My taste level, I don't think this is quite what we're wanting, but I just want to show you how far you can change. Again, I'm going to take that back to zero and just stay with the green. The problem when you are doing replace colour, have I replaced colour within my model skin tone? A little. So again, I'm going to show you how to use a mask to get rid of that. But I'm going to OK that. I'm coming back for the dress. Image, adjustments, replace colour. And I'm simply picking the red. How do I want the red? Do I want the red to be really, really bright? Do I want to cool it down? And in a millimetre of a slider change, create a completely different outfit. Again, if I want every bit of this dress to change, I can go for shot silk, half and half. I can go full way with the slider to make sure all of that dress is changed. I'm actually working with a two-tone chiffon, which is why we've still a lot of pink and a lot of blue. You'll see the one solid color has done a really easy transition through. Let's just play a little bit more. Maybe I'll put it into a cadmium red rather than a crimson, or maybe a burnt orange. So that's added a little bit more warmth. There we go. So if I click OK, we have the changed version. If I click the eye, we have the original and I'm looking at the skin tone. So yes, there is some change in the skin tone. So I simply add a mask. I go back for a black brush and I make a hole in this changed layer so the color from underneath can come back through. But this is brilliant for picking elements in the background. The yellow bucket, if you change the yellow bucket to grey, you don't see it in an image. Things that fluorescence, bright colours, bright pops that are distracting. You can target it and quietly and quickly get rid. And that's the name of the game, isn't it? So I'm going to let our replace colour close. And what have we got here? So. I'm wanting to show you a texture. I've got a backdrop, it's very dark. I've got these already in camera, beautiful color tones, but maybe 
That dark, just sludge background, isn't it, could be enhanced with a texture. So a texture is a photograph of a surface or a combination of surfaces. It can be stone, wood, concrete, paper, material. It can be sky, water. It can be even a, a hand-painted surface. So I'm going to quickly shimmy us back here. I've got, I'm going to open two. And you'll soon see what they are. This is lichen and stone with another couple of layers in. And this is just a blue bit of smudgy brushwork. I'm going to add these into the background so we can compare and contrast. So I'm going to move the uh, texture in using the move tool. Left click, drag up, drag down, left click off. I'm going to drag this to fit. And I'm only wanting a tickle of this colour, not really very much at all. So I'm going to copy my base layer and drag it on top. There's lots of ways I can mask, which what, what I really need to do, I, I need to get the texture into the background. So on this top layer, I can simply remove the background and the texture in the sandwich layer underneath will show through if I remove it. I am going to work quite quickly and I'm going to do a select and mask within Photoshop. So I'm going to simply draw an object selection tool over them to select it. Again, there's 20 ways of being able to do a select and mask in Photoshop. Pretty much that's it. You need to just refine a little bit of edge. So I go into the refine edge brush tool, which is just come back and refine a few little bits that maybe could be a little bit neater. I'm going to go with that and I'm going to output to a layer mask because I want this to mask. In fact, am I moving too quickly in my haste and forgetting the reins? There we go. That's better. So this looks awful. Don't worry about it. Let's go to that texture layer and let's weaken it until it gives us that little bit of colour tickle in the background. Just a little bit. That's better. Now I could even apply a blend mode and see how the blend modes change the image. Now, the colour isn't over the horse or the human. It's simply in the background, but it starts here to give that ethereal, sorry, that ethereal feel. Let me go onto the mask and just soften this foreground back. I'm going to use a brush with the white and you'll see I can remove some of that blue from the foreground. The idea is that you're giving a slight colour harmony change. It's not a big, big change. Let's try that other texture. Move tool, left click down, move up to the image, move down to the image, left click off. I'm not going to remask it. I'm going to, shall we call it shoplifting? I am going to get the mask that's existing, put my finger onto Alt, steal it upwards and drop it. It seems to be the wrong way around, so I simply invert it. Control or Command I for invert. And I've inverted the wrong one. Let's get on the right there. Uh, control or Command I. Again, it's a very fierce texture. It's too much, but we know what to do now is soften it down. The choice of the texture with these beautiful little gold bits was to tone in with the gold around her neck. The grey of the texture is to tone in with the grey of the horse and the grey of the cape and the dress. So I'm not randomly choosing these textures. I'm already looking for colours that I want to build an echo with or add. 
I'm just going to take this down a little bit more. And I'm just going to take this back texture down a little. These are non-destructive edits. I can change my mind as many times as I want. I've still got my unadulterated, untouched base layer. But textures, oh, don't get me started. They do a billion things for you. They are one of the best friends that you can have within your post-processing. So I'm going to let these guys go. I'm also just going to take out those textures. It is determined that I'm coming to the girl and chicken, but we're not there yet. What I want to do now is show you the lookup tables. This we spotted earlier in our adjustment layers. And I've got a, an image here. We've got reds, we've got oranges, we've got this shot silk with a bit of blue coming in. This is proper playtime now. I think we might go a little bit wild, but it's a non-destructive playtime. I've got my base image. I'm back down into these adjustment layers and I go to the colour lookup. These are known as LUTs or L-U-Ts. They're dead easy to make. I need to go into my 3D LUT file. Oh, and where do we start? Any of these are going to give quite major changes. If you look, I'll just come away from here. If you look on that colour lookup layer, we already have a mask. That is telling us it's an extremely easy way to remove some of the colour from skin or some of the colour from this beautiful red throw around us. So let's think, what do we want? We may as well go for something in the beginning that isn't too fierce, soft warming. Does it do what it says on the tin? Let's click. Oh, I just said that was soft cooling. I'm not, not too enamored with that. So non-destructive. Let's go back and see what we've got. Late sunset. I think that's a strong one. Let's see. Whoa. That's a bit mad, but breathe. Let's just take it down. We can drop the opacity of the layer until we get just the right level. I quite like that. I've got giddy though. I'm going to do another. Got to do another. All of these, you can stack them up. You can use them at 5%. You can... Put them onto a blend mode. Let's say we're going to have this one on a blend mode. Crisp winter, crisp warm. That's nice, isn't it? That's beautiful what it's done to the red. Is it too fierce? Maybe. Let's just drop it down. In fact, let's click on our thumbnail and try it with a blend mode because sometimes you never know what happens with a blend mode. Sometimes it gives you the most immense creative image and sometimes it ruins it. But we don't know until we find out. We don't know until we investigate. You'll see each blend mode brings a different quality to both the highlights, the midtones, and those darks. I like this lady in red vibe, but I wonder whether we've got too much on the skin. So. Let me just switch this off and on, that one off and on. I'm going to go on to this mask. The idea of switching them off and on is to find out which layer has got the most powerful effect. I've got a white mask, which means I need a black brush. Select the brush tool and take away from the skin. I've got to be a little careful, but I'm accurate. I could do this with a 5% brush and take a tiny amount away. Or I could do this with a 100% brush and take everything away. And in fact, what I want to do here, let's put a tiny bit back. Let's put 20% back. I'm going to go into the white and I'm adding 20% of that colour back. I like that. What about that first one? Do we want to change it? Yes, let's. So again, I'm going to work with a 20% brush and I'm just going to add in 
a little bit more pizzazz on an edge where I think we need it. So what looks to be fearsome colour choices, layers of like, oh, that's too much. Just dial it down. Use the mask. Control how that colour is fitting in. So our last visit, our last visit is to the girl and hen. This is Florence. And I think this is Maisie, the hen. She's very tame. And we're just going to play a little bit with some colour actions. So what I've got, I'm just going to move my zoom window. I'm just going to come down here to some colour actions. And I've partnered with a designer and made a set of really quite strong colours. Let me go into the one called Black Beauty. These are a number of different edits and it's recorded. So when I press the play button, like an old fashioned cassette player, it plays through a number of different adjustments. Have a watch of this. <laughs> ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. So whether or not the end result is perfect, this gives us a great opportunity to open the action up. This is what we can't do with that look up table. And we can go, I'm just going to dull that. That's a bit strong for this image. It might be perfect for another. What about the colour balance? Do I prefer it on or off? What about warming up? I prefer that off. Use a white brush to brighten. Let's go in. Let's brighten. It's given this lovely soft effect, but I just want to bring back a little bit more detail. Paint on drama with a white brush. So this is to increase some of the contrast. So all of these are actually individual adjustment layers that have then all been recorded and grouped into the action. Look, colour fill. We've done that tonight. Let me switch that off and on. That colour fill's a little strong for me, so I'm simply dropping it down. Orange tint, switch it off, switch it on. That's a little strong for this image. Take it down. Gradient fill, another way of adding some soft light. That to me is taking away from some of the detail sharpness. So for this image, I'm just going to drop it down. Exposure changes. I'm okay with that. Popping the reds. She's quite a lot of red in her skin tone. So I'm going to use the mask. So can you see, depending on what your image is, you can just take a little bit of red out, just take those arms down a tiny little bit. Hue saturation. I'm going to leave that where it is. A curves adjustment layer. I agree with that. Do we want to take any blue out? This is a big change. I'm going to take this layer down, dial down the strength. It's just a little bit too strong because our image already has a lot of blue. I like that though. Paint black to remove from subject. Let's have a look. So I'm going to paint on here just to brighten and to get back a little bit more in the hair. So every colour action is different. I'm going to zoom up to the top and close that down. I have a master copy of the mask. So if I make a hole in this mask, it would take out everything within that action. So we'll just do a quick before and after. Before, after. Ultimately, if the whole effect is still a little bit too strong. I just dial down from the top. So before we say we're done, we've got through all of our planned images. I'm just going to turn off that action. And I'm just going to play a different one to see how that reacts to our image. A little bit too dark. I'm going to try another. All of these. You can play with, you can open up. Now that one's fun. You can dial it down to a tickle. 
combine the two and you've got a beautiful color graded image. So what we have is a whole immense different, <laughs> different selection of techniques that will help you play with color. It'll help you add a little bit more emotion, a little bit more softness or strength or sorrow or happiness or general warm or cool anything to any image in any genre. So I'm happy to stay uh, back in the room now and answer any questions about any of the colour changes that we've seen. OK, but over to some questions. Um, oh, uh, you showed some costumes and someone was asking, where do you hire those dresses and costumes from? <laughs> the mine. I'm a hoarder. OK. I'm a high level hoarder of <laughs> So if you see them, you, you buy them and there they are, you've got them. Um, to be honest, I usually peruse um, eBay around 2 a.m. and I will actually do search terms for theatre costume or historical costume. Um, and if it's cheap and tatty, I'll buy it because it still looks good in a picture. Um, yep. I am also only 20 minutes from the West Yorkshire Playhouse costume department. And I have been guilty of, of hiring from them as well. OK, thank you for that. How important is it to calibrate uh, my iMac? Uh, she's got a 2019 model for accurate colour. Unlike previous models, the current iMac doesn't allow to, her to fine tune the screen. I think, um, especially if you're printing, what you're actually seeing and micro adjusting on screen really does need to be what is coming out at the other end. But sometimes it's not just about calibrating your screen, which is always good practice. It's also about having the right color profile for the papers that you're going to be printing on as well, because that can sometimes considerably change your image, especially if you're going for a certain quite delicate color balance. Thank you. Um, when you create textures, should they be raw too, or JPEG? And how? What sort of size? What's the best um, way to create them? You can uh, take texture photographs with a mobile phone, um, and if they're small files, when you're using them, you would simply make them into a smart object to protect the integrity of your pixels as you expand the file. Um, I tend to shoot in RAW all the time. Um, so my images that I create the textures with are often RAW files. But the second that I've tweaked them and cropped them, I do actually save them as the top quality JPEG. Um, I am guilty of having four terabytes of textures. I am also a texture hoarder, which cannot be good. Cannot be good for your hard drive pocket, can it really? Uh, someone's asking if you can do this sort of thing in Photoshop Elements. Yes, I don't think you've got such a wide variety, but I know that you can change uh, the white balance and the colour tone, and I know that you're able to do adjustment layers. Things like the artistic presets that are within Camera Raw, they won't be there within Elements. Now, the majority of what I've shown you tonight will also work with software such as Affinity, which I know is, is growing in popularity as well. OK, thank you for that. Um, ah, now, do you run courses on this? <laughs> uh, not so much a course. I have an education site. Uh, I am a qualified educator. Uh, and I have a membership site where you can uh, come and be a member just for a month, for uh, six months or a year. And at the moment, we have over 325 hours of tutorial content in a multitude of techniques and styles and genres. It's not just horses and girls in dresses, even though that was my favourite thing this evening. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Um, OK, so uh, that's the end of the questions. There's just people coming in now saying thank you very much. They found it really, really useful. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of people who want to watch it again so they can, you know, make notes and uh, try it out and I guess pause and edit their images and then play a bit and do a, have another go.
So mm. I think thank this, you very much. Is, this is the nature of, of suddenly seeing something in Photoshop. So if I could offer mm. people a little bit of learning advice, look at it, digest it, make some notes, look at it, digest it, try it. Don't look at it, try it with your notes and then try it without your notes. That's the challenge. Your four steps to actually learning to be more intuitive with it. And Angela, we always say, don't we, when you're learning something new, it's like learning a new language. You do have to speak it every week. Otherwise, all of that conversation, that fluency is gone. So please play with colour and think about your mood and story because it, it can make some spectacular images as well. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to say, you really need to do it because you can watch all the YouTube videos in the world but actually if you don't actually do it yourself with your own images and as you say you know try and do it regularly mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't go in yeah yeah so great well thank you very much that's been absolutely fantastic and it's really lovely to see you again thank you you're welcome good to see you as well thank you enjoy the rest of your evening bye-bye you too bye-bye guys